Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, I, I got to I just I got to start with there's this place down the street from the office breakfast place. And I stopped in there, grabbed breakfast before I got into the studio today. And I always order milk with my coffee i just i really use it more to cool the coffee down so i can drink more quickly um i don't like cream though it's just too too heavy in the coffee so i always get just milk and so i had this they brought me this little glass of milk and this mom and dad with their toddler who could not have been more than three years old is walking past on their way out of the out of the restaurant and that kid just grabbed my milk and started chugging <laughs> The parents looked as if if the ground could have opened up and swallowed them whole, then and there, they would have been grateful. They were so embarrassed. I mean, just this look of absolute horrified terror on their face that that I'm going to react in some way. I died laughing. It was that kid was so happy. And I just I thought it was the funniest thing. I just looked at it. I was like, I got two. Don't worry about it. It's just, it is, it's kind of interesting one and just, I mean, teachable moment. <laughs> just that kid, it's just a, absolutely adorable. Um, but the parents were just absolutely horrified, which I get, I would have been too. But then I started thinking about it and, and you know, there are like, a, there are people in this world today who would have reacted so angrily had a toddler done that to them. And I just, I, I don't really relate to those people. Um, I've had, I've got two kids and I thought it was just the funniest thing. Um, really, really funny. The waitress came by afterwards. is like, I need some more milk. I had a toddler come by and drink mine. And she was horrified. She's like, I can't believe that. I was, it's so about, it's, like, ah, it's, it's, it's a toddler. It's okay. It was just, it was a very funny, funny, um, <laughs> Start my day. 877 973 7425. If you want to be on the program, I got a well, I'm not trying to make you mad, but I've got to, I got to deal with a news story that may really make some of you mad. The Consumer Product Safety Commission in wants to begin regulating gas stoves possibly heading towards their ban. The federal agency says a ban on them is on the table. They are not on the surface saying climate change, although if you read the whole story, it turns out it really is about climate change. But their initial issue is asthma. Natural gas stoves used in 40% of homes in the U.S. emit air pollutants such as nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, and fine particulate matter at levels the EPA and the World Health Organization have said are unsafe and linked to respiratory illness, cardiovascular problems, cancer, and other health conditions. According to reports by groups such as the Institute for Policy Integrity, the American Chemical Society, Consumer Reports in October urged consumers planning to buy a new range to consider going electric after 10 Tests conducted by the groups found high levels of nitrogen oxide gases from gas stoves. And now there's new peer-reviewed research from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that 12% or more of current childhood asthma cases are because of gas stove use. I thought it was because of carpets. That's what I was last told, is that homes have become so insulated uh, with and with carpeting, and that's causing the asthma. Now they say it's the stove's. They want to ban stoves. Cory Booker of New Jersey 
And Don Beyer of Virginia urged action and caused gas stove emissions a cumulative burden on, of course, black, Latino, and low-income households. Nearly 100 cities and counties have adopted policies that require or encourage a move away from fossil fuel-powered buildings. The New York City Council voted in 2021 to ban natural gas hookups in buildings smaller than seven stories by the end of this year. The California Air Resource Board unanimously voted in September to ban the sale of natural gas-fired furnaces and water heaters by 2030. And the climate change bill provides incentives. Let let me explain this one to you. These are clearly uh, policies of people who don't live anywhere near the real world. So I live in the state of Georgia. And there's this thing that comes through Georgia every couple of years called a hurricane. And during those hurricanes, power can go out. Utility lines blown down. And if you have an electric stove or an electric water heater, you don't get hot water and you don't get food that's hot from your home. Gas stoves are a necessity in areas that are regularly hit with storms. Because if you don't have underground electrical utilities, the power could go out. My neighborhood has underground electric utilities. But the lines coming into our neighborhood are not underground. And so the power can go out in our neighborhood if on the main road outside our neighborhood, if a tree falls down and takes out the power lines, we can be without power. The fact that they don't even recognize that, and in California you have the power outages – There are parts of this country where there are boil water advisories on occasion, particularly when storm, when power comes out, when power goes out during storms and sewage systems and water treatment facilities become contaminated and compromised. You got to boil water. If you don't have a gas stove, you can't boil the water unless you're going to go build a fire. What do the environmentalists want? All of us to go outside and start chopping down trees to be able to boil water and cook food? Do they really want us to be burning wood? Natural gas is not a bad thing. Thing to be using for power. It's way more environmentally friendly than coal or chopping down trees and burning wood. They can hide now if they want behind asthma and say it's asthma, but they're pretty upfront about the fact that it really is climate change. Now, I want to read you this this sentence in Bloomberg News. Natural gas distributors argue that a ban on natural gas stoves would drive up costs for homeowners and restaurants with little environmental gain. The American Gas Association, which represents utilities, said in a statement that regulatory and advisory agencies responsible for protecting residential consumer health and safety have presented no documented risks from gas stoves. Let me reread this first sentence to you as they actually wrote it. Natural gas distributors whose business is threatened by the growing push to electrify homes. So because they're threatened by this, maybe you shouldn't believe them. They never say that about the environmentalists. The environmentalists who get a lot of funding by claiming everything is related to climate change. By the way, the Consumer Product Safety Commission and the EPA don't present gas ranges as a significant contributor to inborn air quality issues. They they don't actually. The data is not actually there. Kind of fascinating. They are out to curb all of our behaviors. For climate change. And this this goes to a larger issue. The government itself has decided that it wants us to conform our behaviors in ways that are disruptive to our lifestyles. They want to regress our lifestyles. But actually, it is a it is a weird regression to regress us in ways away from natural gas towards electricity produced often by natural gas and coal in order to do this. Now, full disclosure in my house, we have an induction range. 
Uh, there, so there are three types of, of stovetops. There's electric, there's an induction, and there's gas. We have induction in our house, and, and the reason is because with an electric stove, a lot of the energy generated to generate the heat doesn't actually go into the pot of water. Same with gas. A lot of professional chefs love gas because of the way you can control the heat. And you can also use the flame for other things. For example, uh, on my, I've got an outside, um, I've got a really amazing grill from a company called DCS. If you want like the greatest outdoor grill you can get, get one from the company DCS, DCS Grills. This is not an ad. I just love them. Yes, I have my Rectech, but I use my Rectech and my Big Green Egg for smoking. I, I For grilling, I use my DCS. And it has two side burners. When I'm making Mexican food or some vegetable dishes, I can use my outdoor burner and I can char the tortillas and, and char the vegetables really easily with the open flame. We don't have one inside. My wife does not like gas stove. She doesn't like the cleanup and the mess. But when we go to the beach, we go to the beach or the mountains where you've got snowstorms in the mountains, you've got hurricanes in the beach, every house we stay in has gas. In fact, we stay at a house in the mountains that even has a gas oven, which I haven't seen a gas oven since I was a kid. My grandparents had one. But if your power goes out, gas still works. And the reason the gas still works is because the gas lines are buried underground. Same with the water. The gas and the water are underground, so the water can still flow and the gas can still flow, barring really catastrophic storms. So in a house where you can't get power for two weeks, you can still have the gas so you can still cook. You can still boil water. We are being led by people out of touch with most Americans. We are having policies set through fear. And we are having your way of life disrupted by a bunch of people who are putting the planet ahead of the people on it. And they think that's a good thing. And I'm here to tell them that we are to be good stewards of but exercise dominion over this planet. We cannot save the planet by degrading humanity. There's no reason to save the planet if we're going to end our way of life. We can always adapt. The idea that 12% of households are causing kids to get asthma, 12%, when gas is in 40% of homes in America for stoves. We're not talking now. We're not talking about furnaces, and we're not talking about uh, water heaters. Although, I got to tell you, I've got an electric water heater. I like my electric water heater, but I wish I had a gas water heater. And I wish I had, I don't even have a gas line into my house in this neighborhood. I wish I'd known that before I bought the house. I wasn't thinking we've got gas fireplaces. I didn't even realize, oh, I need a propane tank now. But when the power goes out with a gas water heater, you still get hot water. These sorts of things actually do matter. And the, the fact that this administration wants to drive up these costs, particularly on poor people are more likely to get a gas range. Gas ranges tend to be cheaper. And they want to drive up the cost of the poor. Oh, well, we're going to give them a government subsidy. Do you know how the subsidy works? Do you, did you know this? The subsidy works because you go buy your electric range and your electric HVAC system. And next year on your taxes, you can get a credit. What if you don't pay taxes? What if you don't make money enough where you're not really paying a lot in taxes? It doesn't really help you as much as the government seems to claim that it does. Some people get actually cash back for doing it, but not everybody. And yet this is what they're doing. They want to not only steer the regulatory state, but the tax system to curb your behavior. The tax system should be about raising money to fund the government, not curbing and changing and altering your behavior. The regulatory state should be about protecting the majority of us, not the 12 percent and disrupting the way of life for everyone else. The cost benefit analysis is not there. But the bottom line is that these people are so obsessed about climate change now, they're hiding everything. And in this one, they can't openly admit it's about climate change because they know you're not buying the argument anymore. And so what they're doing is they're, oh, this is about the 12% of households where someone make it asthma. That makes it even worse. But they don't care because they're zealots.
If you own a small to medium-sized business that kept employees on payroll through COVID, you may have a big cash refund waiting for you. The employee retention credit is a tax credit of up to $26,000 per employee, and now more businesses than ever qualify. The experts at RefundsPro.com specialize in cutting through the red tape of qualifying for this government program. Most of their refunds are over $100,000. Even businesses that have received PPP funds may be eligible, and there are absolutely no fees unless you receive a refund. There's no reason not to apply. If your business experienced shutdowns, limited capacity, supply chain challenges, or even reduced revenue due to COVID, you likely qualify. RefundsPro.com has already helped hundreds of businesses, so don't lose the refund you're owed by missing the deadline. Get started today with a free five-minute questionnaire at Refunds with an S, refundspro.com. That's refunds with an S, pro.com. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. Across the nation, the phone number is 877 973 7425. Should you wish to be on the program, Jim, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Good afternoon. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm good. The environmentalists really are an ignorant group. Uh, a lot of our electricity is generated with natural gas, mm -hmm. and only 60% of the energy uh, goes into making the electricity. The rest is lost to heat. There are line losses to the house, and now you want to heat your food with electricity instead of using 100%. <clears throat> to heat your food with natural gas. It, it, it doesn't make any sense at all, but they don't care about it. They, they, they want to control us. I mean, this is one of the, the, the criticisms of the COVID regime over the last couple of years that public health officials decided they could use the virus to control our behaviors. And that proved to be true in many cases. They want to control your behavior. They believe in a technocratic elite who have the best interests of the planet at heart, of which you are a part. And they don't care about you individually. They care about the planet. And you are supposed to care about the planet. And you are a bad, bad, bad person if you don't put the planet and society ahead of yourself. The collective must dominate the individual, according to these people. We're actually going to talk about this when we come back um, on a different angle. Same topic, different side of it. 877 973-7425 is the number if you want to be on the program. When we come back, I do want to spend a few minutes related to this topic on the antagonism over this deal in Congress. By the way, no one blocked the rules package. The rules package that Chip Roy negotiated has now been enacted by the GOP in the House of Representatives, uh, and a number of conservatives are coming forward and um, getting committee assignments, Kevin McCarthy keeping his word, as a lot of people said he wouldn't. I've got details on all that, but this idea of this technocratic elite and this idea that the leaders should lead in places like Congress, I vehemently disagree with it. Well, uh, the public religion research uh, 2016 report notes that uh, there is higher viewpoint intolerance among Democrats than Republicans, and it almost all comes from female Democrats. Female Democrats are more likely to block friends on social media and stop having contact with those they disagree with politically. The party, well, I, I, I'm not supposed to say Karen. People get mad at me, but you know what I mean. Uh, I want to talk about this leadership stuff. Uh, down in Brazil, okay, one of the funniest stories that I ever heard was Oprah Winfrey talking about how she used to be like a TV anchor in Kentucky, in Louisville, Kentucky, when she started out and, and she got into to naming places and using their foreign names and was going through this list. She got to Argentina, Brazil, Cameroon, and then she got to Canada <laughs> instead of Canada. <laughs> in Brazil, the um, the supporters of the president who lost have stormed 
everything in in uh, Brasilia, the capital. They have taken over. Well, they had the police have now restored order. They took over the legislative assembly building, took over the presidential palace. They took over the Supreme Court building there. Nothing like what happened here. And yet all these people, it's just like Trump supporters. Oh, it's just, it's just I've got PTSD. It, it's. I saw a youth pastor in my denomination. I'm in the Presbyterian Church in America, one of the more conservative evangelical denominations out there. And a youth pastor in my denomination tweeted that January 6th is as defining a moment for Gen Z as 9-11 was a defining moment for millennials. Uh Uh-huh. He deleted his account justifiably after saying that nonsense. But for the media, it is. I, I couldn't get over the real level of antagonism on CNN after Kevin McCarthy won. Uh, particularly, if for those of you who didn't stay up on Friday night into Saturday, I was up until almost 1 a.m. Uh, they had the 14th vote. It came down to Matt Gates. He voted present, which meant McCarthy lost. And they started to adjourn until Monday, and then Gates changed his mind. McCarthy had to rush down and stop the vote, uh, change things. They had the next vote. He won, and everyone was like, what can you expect by the chaos candidates of January 6th? And these are the people who caused the Capitol to be stormed, and this is just so bad. There are a whole lot of people who— really interpret the election as we should tie every Republican to January 6th and they'll never win again, which is not true. I mean, listen, this is Jonathan Capehart on MSNBC with Representative Madeline Dean of Pennsylvania. I've not been shy about saying that McCarthy's protracted fight over the speaker's gavel with members of his own party was a continuation of that insurrection. Am I wrong? Am I going too far? No, you're not going too far. Uh, It absolutely is uh, proof of how he has failed. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's that's actually what they claim, which is nonsense, of course. Um, Gracious. So... Let let, let me wrap all this stuff up, and and I promise it it, it tied into the... um, it tied into the gas stove story in a different way, in a roundabout way. Um, a lot of the commentary, and, and for lack of a better term, the meta commentary, the commentary about the commentary over what happened with Kevin McCarthy and everything else in general. Is there are people who they they just for some reason we need a leader in the House of Representatives. There has to be someone to tell them what to do. And in fact, some of the Republicans, the criticism Republicans made of Republicans was we gotta have a leader. We gotta have a strong leader. We gotta have someone tell us who to who to vote for, how to vote, what to vote for, to shape the legislation. We need the leader. No. So there is this growing divide in commentary on the right that we've gone too far in the direction of individualism in this country. I would say we haven't actually gone too far on individualism. We've gone too far on individuality, and there actually is a difference between the two. On individualism, the way it is supposed to work, the the conservative ideal of how it works is I make a decision that is in my best interest and the best interest of my family. You make a decision based on your best interest and the interest of your family. And in the free marketplace of ideas and markets, we have to compromise between what is in my best interest and your best interest to get something done. And the result is that in improving my family's interests and you improving your family's interests, we have improved our community's interest overall through the individuality and the individual approach and individualism and rugged individualism. The problem, however, is that individualism is actually distinct from individuality, how we express ourselves. 
and we have gone too far in how we express ourselves in demanding that others adhere to that expression of individuality where I get to pick my pronouns and you get to pick your pronouns as opposed to having a common set because, and this is the thing, individualism does not work when you have this radical individuality where everyone has their own definitions for things. There is a common good approach to individuality where we have a shared norm on definitions and through that shared norm of definitions, you and I can individually work for our own best interests. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who have grabbed hold of the idea of of we've gone too far with radical expressions of individuality, and they've made it about, oh, we've gone too far in individualism, and and there must be something for the common good. And you hear the sole frame of common good now on the right, and we see this in these conversations about leaders. We need a leader to help us decide. We need a leader to help us vote. We need a leader to tell us what to vote for, as opposed to you figuring it out for yourself. I had to put together a, um, oh, I don't even know what you call it. Essentially, it's a giant upright duffel bag for our Christmas tree. I, I, I use an artificial tree. I would love to have a real tree. I want a giant real tree every year. And I am so allergic. And I am the one who sets it up. And I am the one who takes it down. And just touching the thing makes me break out. I miss them. When I was a kid, it didn't bother me at all. As I've gotten older, I've gotten more and more allergic to touching uh, juniper, pine, cypress, all of it. I just, I get so allergic. I got to have a fake one and I hate it. I love the smell of the real one. Every I hate the needles falling on the floor, but nonetheless. So I ordered from Frontgate uh, a giant duffel thing. It's on rollers because I like a giant tree. My tree is so tall. It went all the way to the ceiling. We couldn't even put the angel and the star on top, angel or star. We go back and forth because the tree, I mean, with the stand and everything, it was so tall. It it touched the ceiling. It was 12 feet tall. We got 12 feet, 12 foot ceilings. The tree was technically only 10 feet tall, but it just, it, it was a very tall tree. And so I got this giant rolling duffel bag where I can put the tree pieces together in this bag, and I had to set it up. There were no instructions, none. Did not come with instructions, so I got on Front Gate's website to try to find the instructions. There was nowhere to find them. I figured that thing out by myself, I want you all to know, and I got it together. And it was a pain in the butt, and I was a sweaty, hot mess after it was over, but I got it together. I figured it out for myself. I was very proud of myself. I'm stunned by the number of people these days who don't even want to bother trying to figure things out for themselves. I know there are people who do listen to this program who just want to know what's going on in the world. And I do my best, and and I've been very biased these past couple weeks on this fight with Kevin McCarthy where I haven't just been giving you the lay of the land from all sides. I've had a dog in the fight. But I try to just on a daily basis tell you, here's what's happening. Let me analyze it for you so you could decide what to think. I'll tell you what I think. But I, I abhor the idea that I should be in the position of telling you what to think about an issue. I don't want to tell you what to think about an issue. I want you to make up your own mind about stuff. I want to give you all the facts and the analysis so you can make up your mind. and do. When I'm real biased on something, I try to tell you. I'm just shocked by the number of people who want that sort of direction in life. They want me to tell them what to think. They want me to help them take action. They want me to do stuff for them. And I I say that lovingly. I'm not criticizing any of you who do. I understand. I can make your life easy. This is one reason I like to do the Army of Activists and when I can do these things um, so that you can be engaged and, and, and take sides on stuff. But we saw this conversation translate into leadership in Congress that we need a strong speaker who can tell us how to vote. We need this. We need that. And it's all about control. And yes, this ties into the stove issue because it is this technocratic elite who believe that there should be strong leaders in this country who control your life and tell you how to live your life and tell you what to do in life, tell you how to think, tell you what to think, tell you where to think, tell you where to go, tell you what education to have. And you, at the end of the day, are just this automaton guided by other people. And we are seeing the failure of that elite. 
So in Brazil, Bolsonaro's followers, supporters, they've stormed the buildings and all the media, it's January 6th. There's this new news outlet, Semaphore. I don't find it all that original or as insightful as they claimed I would, but I did see something the other day that I thought was interesting, that that the reporter said the big issue here is to understand what really has been happening with the Trump movement here in January 6th and all that, you can't just have an American view. You must look globally. This is happening all around the world. And what is it? What is the common tie that binds I'll tell you what I think it is. Our institutions have failed. As our institutions have failed, individuals have started looking for individuals to rally around who might fight those institutions. In the United States, a large group of very disaffected people who believe that our entire system is broken and unresponsive found Donald Trump, and they wanted him to be the bull in the china shop. They embraced him most when he was the bull in the china shop. And they have resented him backing Kevin McCarthy because Kevin McCarthy isn't a wrecking of the system. It's the establishment. And that's mattered. In Brazil, they went with Bolsonaro because they decided he mattered most and could wreck that system. And we see it with COVID, the failures of the CDC and the FDA and the, the, the health community and their desire to use the COVID crisis to control and curb our behaviors. And it's kind of interesting uh, when they should have been making us go to the gym and exercise, they were shutting, shutting the gyms down. They made all the wrong decisions. They made everything wrong. And it's a further recognition that even as the technocratic elite seek to control us through the institutions, their leadership has caused the institutions to fail, and people have embraced these cults of personality around politicians they perceive as bulls in china shops. And the solution is to fix the institutions. The problem, however, is that as the institutions fail and others are relied on, those people we rely on have no incentive to fix the institutions because then you may give up your trust and return it to the institutions as a whole. So the technocrats don't have a, any incentive to fix the system. They want to use the system to control you. The people who you're turning to don't have an incentive to fix the system because they don't want you to rely on the system. The whole thing breaks down unless we ourselves through individual contact in the free marketplace of ideas, begin to restore it. It's on us. It's not on them. We have the leaders we deserve because we have the leaders we collectively voted for. And you can say, well, I didn't vote for Joe Biden. No, but a majority of Americans did. And we all have to pay the price, including the people who voted for him. One of the groups you can put some level of trust in to help you pick the right people to campaign for, vote for, support the causes to care about is Patriot Mobile because they give a portion of their profits to the causes you care about. You can go to PatriotMobile.com, PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. You can go there now. You can take your business to Patriot Mobile. You can carry your cell phone to them. You can get a new cell phone from them. You can get a new phone from them or just use your unlocked phone at PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Do it today. And they give a portion of their profits to the causes you care about. You get guaranteed great service. They use the same cell towers everybody else uses. And they have 100% U.S.-based customer service. So you can even call them at 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation by using my name. You get great discounts if you're a teacher, a veteran, a first responder, an NRA member. So much more. you got a large family with multiple lines that you need to pay for. Patriot Mobile can help you. And again, you get guaranteed great service. You can go to their website, patriotmobile.com slash Eric. Look at their coverage map all the way down to your house. 5G data voice, you name it, and they give a portion of their profits to the conservative movement. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K or 972 Patriot. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you'd like to be on the program, I I, I, I got to pause for a moment here. <sighs> Ah. 
It is college football championship day. The University of Georgia playing against Texas Christian University. And so I'm a little bit torn because I'm a native of Louisiana and grew up rooting for LSU and still do. And now I live in Georgia and I root for Georgia. And people say, well, who do you root for when they play each other? And and when they play each other, I tend to root based on where they're playing. Although lately, gosh, LSU has been kind of disappointed. I went to the I went to the SEC championship game and left at halftime. I mean, I, I knew that LSU was toast at halftime. Uh, and, and so I kind of root for both teams. People are like, well, you got to be loyal to one, and that certainly is part of the football culture of the South. Uh, I will tell you, I've, I've never been a big Falcons fan. I, I've always rooted for the Saints and Green Bay. Uh, I own Green Bay. I was very bitterly disappointed in that game last night. My goodness. Uh, I own, I'm a Green Bay owner. But I will be watching uh, the football game tonight in large part just because I like football college football, and I didn't growing up. It's been a very interesting thing. And in all seriousness, not not, not for a flippant point here, uh, I am very much an introvert. I, I do not like large groups of people. I don't. I can talk to a large group of people. I just don't like being in a large group of people. I would rather stand in the corner and stare at my phone and be left alone than awkwardly try to mill about and talk to a bunch of people. And I have found uh, that football actually is a way I can get friends together and we can sit there and enjoy each other's company. We don't have to talk the entire time. We can watch the football game together. And so I'm going to miss college football, and I'm going to miss the NFL when it wraps up. Uh, there, there will be hockey games for sure, and eventually baseball. I'm not a bat. I've just never liked basketball. But I kind of, I kind of will miss that level of camaraderie, and and but I'm going to be watching the game tonight, um, not with a ton of people, uh, maybe by myself. Possibly with Philip, but um, it'll be it'll be a good time. This hour of the program is brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Wherever you are nationwide, they can help your business grow. They're in noon in Georgia, but it doesn't matter. If you're in Portland, Oregon, or you're in Miami, Florida, they can help your business grow. Uh, they've been doing this since the 90s. Just spend 10 minutes with them and see if you're a good fit for their program. FirstLibertyGA.com. Tell them I sent you FirstLibertyGA.com. When we come back, we've got to move on to Mexico. The failed narco state. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. (gasps) No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.